Now I want to show you that both of these methods mean absolute error and mean a squared error that we did in class. Both of them have a difficulty. And, and for that, then we need something else, which is called mean absolute percentage of error. So let's say that we have two employees and they are using two different methods of forecasting. For example, we have Mary and we have John. And Mary is dealing with a phenomena and uh, uh, she has had uh, like the phenomena actual values are these. So I say uh, time bucket actual and her forecasts. We don't know what is the method of forecasting that Mary is using, but uh, so these are the actuals that Mary is dealing with. Okay, let me create the time buckets as well. So in time buckets or time intervals, one, two, two, three, four, up to 12 in the past 12 weeks, the actuals in this uh, phenomena that Mary is forecasting has been 10, 11, 12, 12, 13, 14, and so forth. And her forecasts has been 11, 12, 11, 13, 14, 13, in 11, 16. See, she could never forecast exactly correctly, but she doesn't have a lot of error either. So every week she's doing a relatively good forecast uh, for 50. But John is dealing with a different phenomenon there. Uh, during the same time interval, is dealing with another phenomenon with its actuals are 100, 101, 102, 100. One hundred four. One hundred. Uh, write down these numbers as you are in the end. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to use mean squared error and tell me which one of these two. Once I finish the numbers, then I, I have an assignment for you. Hold a second. So seven is one o oh, three one o oh, two. Uh, one o three and one o five. And his forecasts have been one o one, one o two, one o three, one o Uh, Amir, I think you wrote one for the first time bucket instead of 101. Thank you. Okay. So, I guess some of you can uh, see what is happening. Basically, John also doesn't have that much error in forecasting and uh, has similar errors as Mary has. Now, my assignment for you is uh, copy these values and uh, tell me what is the mean squared error for Mary? And what is the mean squared error for John? Be quick. And I guide you what you have to do. You have to add um, maybe two columns here. We need one more column here. So here you have to calculate the error. Here you have to calculate the error to the power of two. 
and the same thing and error to the power of two then you will find the average of error squares and you will tell me what is the mean squared error of each case be quick no i just wanted to make sure that everybody is doing it like okay, yeah, okay thank you but uh, thanks a lot um, So what is the mean squared error for Mary? 0 0.91667. Okay. And the mean squared error for John? It's the same. Exactly. So let's, let us think about this. Are these two people really the same? Do they have the same level of success in their prediction or not? They have been predicting things in the past 12 weeks uh, and they look similar from mean squared error, but one of them actually is much better than the other one. Which one do you think has better predictions? John. Why? Because the percentage would be better. Exactly. So look at this. John. Yes, his forecast is off. Uh, when when the actual was 100, his forecast was 101. Fine. But his error, like he has an error of one in a prediction that is about 100. Now, Mary, uh, when the actual was 10, you know, the, when, he, when she forecasted, the forecast was 11, the actual came through 10. That also seems to be one unit of error, but this is one unit of error around a phenomena that its value was uh, 10. So like for, for Mary, this is like a 10% error compared to actual, but for John, it is 1% error for the actual, compared to the actual. So basically this uh, mean squared error will not be able to um, basically tell us different goodness of different forecasts if the phenomena we are comparing has different order of magnitude. But there is another technique that will not have that problem. Okay, so let's get rid of this method of measurement. Let's get rid of mean squared error. And instead of using mean squared error, we will use mean absolute percentage of error, which is basically we will find the error first, and then here we will say, okay, error is always actual minus forecast. So I find each one of my errors for Mary, and I find each error for John, actual minus forecast. And here, like uh, for mean, absolute error, we would find the absolute uh, value of the error, but here we will find absolute percentage of error. And to find that percentage, we basically uh, find the, uh, we find the absolute value of the error this is the absolute value of error, very similar to MAE. But we don't rely on the absolute value of error. We divide it by the actual. Notice the denominator is actual, okay? So now we are comparing the amount of error, the absolute value of error, and we are comparing or finding, putting it in the context of the actual amount of the value that we are forecasting. And you either can convert it to percentage now or you can convert it to percentage at the end. Let's do it now. It doesn't make any difference. But if I want to convert this to percentage, I multiply by 100 here. You can also multiply by 100 at the end. So here we have 10% error. And for every week, we have some percent, every month or week, whatever time bucket is, we have some percentage of error 10%, 9%, 8%, and so forth. And now here, 
the result will not be mean square error. The result would be mean absolute percentage of error because each one of these is the the absolute value divided by actual is basically the absolute percentage of error. And when we find the average of these percentages of error, then this is the mean absolute percentage of error. Now, I'll do the same thing for John now. We have John's error. Please calculate mean absolute a percentage of error for John. Is the MAPE at the bottom a percentage as well? Yeah, because because each one of these, I made them to be percentage, the final is automatically percentage. If you don't convert this to percentage during this process, then at the end, you have to multiply it by a percent, 100. So since this 10 is 10% and this 6 is 6%, then the final result is automatically a percentage. Now I show you this formula so you can copy it for, for John. So we are going to first find the absolute value of the error, but we are not going to rely on that like MAE. We are going to divide it by actual. This gives us the the ratio of the error to make it a percentage, we multiply it by 100. And now this is 1% error. Uh, now we have all of the percentage of errors and the average of the percentages of error, of course, will be much less, like about 9%, a 0.9, less than 1% error in case of John and 7% error in case of Mary. Okay, so basically the three methods of evaluation are mean absolute error and mean squared error. And you can choose either of them uh, to compare different methods of evaluation and choose the one that is best uh, in a specific situations.